we probably have time for one more call. Let's okay. uh, let's take a Loke from California. He him says, uh, <laughs> "Is being LGBTQ a choice?" I wonder why no. you're calling in to talk heathen to ask this question. Um, but maybe it's religious religion based. But it says you're an atheist. A Loke. Yeah, I think I'm really. I think I mainly called because Katie is here and I watched her transfer Atlantic show and I, it may not be nice. related to atheism. And sometimes I wonder why we discuss it. Maybe we discuss it because the religious assholes discriminate against trans people and all that stuff. But I've been doing some research on this topic recently and that's why I called. Maybe you can educate me or maybe we can debate that in the last four years, the, the number of people in the Gen Z generation who identify as LGBTQ has gone up from 10% to 21%. And I've read some other scientific <clears throat> articles, and I think the medical consensus is it is not a choice. 60% uh, of these people, I think, identify as bisexual, which maybe could be a choice. So my only point was, uh, we always say it is uh, by birth, it is not a choice. The more I read, I'm more unconvinced of it. So I was just trying to ask you guys okay. if it's possible if it's a choice because it changes the dynamic entirely of the debate because if it's a choice then maybe you can talk to the person and I can tell them hey is this the choice you're making you know what you're going to face this is this is what's going to happen and it kind of doesn't make sense it's a choice because they are the most discriminated people so why would you make that choice but i think yeah. the gen z and this generation uh, even though they're more open to admitting it now because things have changed, I don't think in four years it could double from 10 to 21%. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm wrong. Right. So I think um, this kind of, is it a choice or isn't is, isn't it a choice? Is, I mean, it's kind of a false dichotomy. Not, I'm not accusing you of bringing that. It's, it's the way that politics always gets boiled down to just yes or no on everything. And then there's no room for like nuance or anything. I What I usually say is, you know, I'm saying, oh, it's not a choice. And that's what I'd say when I'm talking on some politics show where I get one minute to do a soundbite or something. And the reason I'd say that is I'm communicating that it isn't like some, oh, I'm just going to be gay today, like some kind of freestanding choice. But that isn't me making the claim that being LGBT is 100% nature. And um, that's the only factor influencing it. I th you know, I think all human behavior is a mixer of nature and nurture. Um, I just think it's largely nature for being LGBT. Um, and I think there's there's a number of reasons that I would make that claim. And I think, like you say, the fact that people are so discriminated against is arguably a piece of evidence. But also we have evidence of LGBT people existing in cultures where there is, you know, it's, it's punishable by death. And um, we have evidence of it in every single culture in, in the world and throughout history. Um, and it, that seems unlikely um, given... Uh, it, it, you know, that would be unlikely if it was something that we had just kind of invented. Um, also, we have evidence that conversion therapy doesn't work. So you'd think if it was uh, environmental, you could just teach people to not be gay. And there are a lot of people trying very hard to do that. And it's it's not happening um, on the um, the increase in numbers. And, and you mentioned bisexual being a choice. And I, I think I know what you mean here is that if you were born bisexual and like sexually attracted to men and women, and you were a man, and you grew up in a society that's like virulently homophobic, then you might just look at men, and then you'll marry a woman, and you'll never tell anyone. And then suddenly you're in a society where it's acceptable to be bisexual or just like totally normal and no one cares, then you'll be more likely to tell people. So the rates, like in that sense, it's a choice to reveal it. And bisexual people have some level of choice about how to display their sexual orientation to other people in that they can keep, stay in the closet um, and still live a happy life with a partner in a way that gay people can't. Um, so you're right, in, in a society that's more accepting of um, of LGBT people, then we would expect the like bisexual people coming out more. We also have, um, <clears throat> I mean, we do have a similar thing. I mean, in history, gay people have married in straight relationships and have even come out quite late into their lives. Uh, so, so we do we do see a lot of pressure to be heterosexual, and the same with a lot of pressure to be cis. Um, for trans people, there is a kind of 
a weighing off of the pros and cons in transitioning. Um, obviously, gender dysphoria is horrible, and some people have it so bad that they get into this position where it's like, I, well, I will transition, even if I lose all my friends and family, even if I'm fired, even if I'm kicked out of my church, even if I'm lost from my community, because I just have to, because it's it's transition or death. Lots of people aren't that. N none of this is like a strict binary. Uh, it's, it's, there's a range. It's like any sort of medical condition where you could have a really bad headache or not not such a bad headache. And if you're if you have gender dysphoria and it's quite bad, but it's not like do or die on transition, then you might be able to force yourself to live some kind of life and existence. Or maybe gender dysphoria isn't that bad at all. Um, and then as society becomes more accepting, the the cost uh, risk or the risk or reward ratio changes more in your favor and you'll be more likely to come out. Um, so I think I think that's a factor in it. And I, th I think I think there's some uh, evidence for that in that we can see that trans people exist in every society, but in more accepting societies, more of them come out and they come out at earlier ages as well, which is uh, an, an important factor. Like when I, you know, I, I, ex I had gender dysphoria when I was a kid and I wished I was a girl when I was a kid. Um, but I didn't know that was a thing until much later in my life. And now all these kids know it because it's on TV and there would be lots of people who would be coming out later in life. And also, so we don't just, it's not just that, um, as people become more aware then people are having more courage to come out, it, it happens quite a lot faster because there are loads of people all of a sudden of this whole generation who are being taught about LGBT issues and they can learn about it from the internet. Um, and all of a sudden they, you know, that whole, the whole generation is given that knowledge. And so all of the trans ones there will come out. Um, so I guess to your thing about being less and less convinced, it's not a choice. Oh, sorry. One other point was you were saying about it changes the nature of the like discussion or, or debate or whatever. I would say, I mean, I think trivially so for sexual orientation, <clears throat> um, if it was a choice, like a totally free choice, then they should be allowed to choose that. Uh, there's, it doesn't affect my life at all if you're gay or straight or bisexual or, or anything. Like it really makes no difference to me. And and if I'm offended by it, then I'm just a loser. Like who cares? Fuck off. If we discover tomorrow, scientifically proven fact, being gay is a choice, then we should still have gay rights. We should still have gay marriage. Gay people should still be allowed to adopt. There's nothing wrong with gay people or being gay at all. And for trans people, I would argue the same. I, 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 I think. Have... So I'll just finish off, and then I'll give you the last thing. Um, uh, just on trans people, I think that people should have bodily autonomy and and the choice to control their own body and ch choose who they are. I mean, whether it's a choice or not. Um, we do know that like transition improves people's lives, so we have some scientific evidence for it, but. I mean, we we let people do all kinds of dumb stuff. I mean, even if transition didn't really improve people's lives, I mean, we let people smoke. Uh, that's that's a stupid choice. So, um, hey, anyway, what what do you have as a response? Unless Johnny wants because, to because uh, of the time, uh, because of the timing, the last two things were yeah. I personally could, uh, couldn't care less if it's a choice or by birth, but I've been arguing with uh, zealots and even moderate theists that. Okay. It's not a choice, and the latest medical research and everything I'm saying, I, mm. I, it tells me it tells me the wrong way, and I couldn't care less. But I think if that is the fact that some is, some of it is choice, some of it is birth, some of it is a mixture, we should represent the truth because we the atheism relies on facts, right? And then yeah, the last thing was sure. what Johnny was asking why, and the last thing was what Johnny was asking why is it part part of our atheism shows. Oh, I'll tell you why it's part of our atheism shows, and I'm going to let you go while I answer that question, Alok. I really appreciate that you called, but we're running out of time, so I'm going to drop you. Please call again with your good questions in the future. The reason why this is uh, part of atheism shows, and even though, you know, and I think you're on the side that I am about this, is that the reason why I think a lot of people are against uh, the LGBTQ community is because they've been indoctrinated by their by their religion to say that there is a very specific role that a person born with XY chromosomes have and a very specific role that a person with XX chromosomes have and the XXs have to have long hair and have to crank out the babies. They need to be subservient. They need to let the XY chromosome people uh, be the leaders in the family, leaders in the community they need to shut the fuck up and listen to what they have to say. 
They say this on various different uh, levels. They say this with various different words. They usually couch it in terms of the dignity of motherhood and the high responsibility of managing a house. But ultimately it comes down to, if you're a gal, shut the flying fuck up and listen to the men because of religion, or because, because Jesus says so, because Genghis proclaimed it so, or Muhammad or whoever the fuck ever, Sky Daddy, right? That's why it comes up, because I can't think of any legitimate reasons outside of superstition and dogma for these rules to apply to anybody ever, right? Uh, that's why it comes up. Um, so, yeah. With that said, faith based position. Yeah.